Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. The early use of docetaxel is perhaps the most important new finding that we have had uh, in, the, in the past year, uh, which is interesting because docetaxel has been around for quite some time. We're talking about the outcomes of a series of studies for patients with metastatic disease with that we would call hormone sensitive. So patients who are undergoing androgen deprivation therapy, uh, there, are now, there are now three randomized trials in which uh, patients who received androgen deprivation therapy were compared to patients receiving androgen deprivation therapy plus docetaxel. Uh, the most important study for those of us in the U.S. that I think that can guide treatment is ECOG 3805, also known as the charted study. Now, this was presented last year in a plenary session at ASCO by Christopher Sweeney from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. And what this study demonstrated is that the administration of docetaxel with the initial androgen deprivation therapy led to a significant improvement in median survival for these patients. Um, it's also important to point out that uh, the survival was most pronounced in patients with more extensive disease. Uh, and by more extensive disease in that study, at least, uh, it was patients with four or greater bone metastases. In the patients with fewer than four bone metastases, the survival curves had not yet fully separated and matured to the point where we can state with, 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 uh, with clarity that there is a survival benefit uh, for those patients. If you look at those survival curves, it looks like they're beginning to separate. It's just that the, the, many of the patients are, remain alive uh, at the time of the analysis, and so we haven't really seen if there's a significant impact. The second study that has been uh, published and then represented is the, is the GETUG uh, study, GETUG AF15. Uh, and this is a very similar study, allowed a slightly different uh, group of patients, allowed uh, enrollment of some patients with a slightly lower uh, burden of disease. And that study did not demonstrate a survival advantage to the use of docetaxel. Um, now that study, uh, there's some controversy because of um, uh, the uh, extent of subsequent docetaxel in both of these studies. And so there's um, a bit of controversy between those two. Fortunately, there's a third study that's going to report very soon. Uh, and this is the Stampede study, which comes out of the UK. Very impressive study with multiple arms. But one of the arms is androgen deprivation therapy plus docetaxel. Now we have uh, an early uh, signal from a press release uh, stating that that study is positive. It is going to demonstrate uh, that there is a survival advantage uh, for early docetaxel, but we don't quite have the details that we, uh, that we would like for clinical decision making. My sense is, uh, is that the, uh, the, the standard of care in the U.S. is changing quite rapidly, and, and not only do I see patients in my own practice and where I'm using docetaxel uh, early on, I also see many patients who have been treated out in the community, and it looks like community physicians have gotten this message and are integrating chemotherapy earlier into the clinical course of their patients. I think typically uh, when a patient progresses on uh, chemotherapy, if they have metastatic disease, if I'm treating them earlier uh, based on the charted study or the GETUG study, uh, I, I essentially reset the clock. And this does not mean we do not have data to suggest uh, that abiraterone is ineffective or enzalutamide is ineffective in this setting. And so basically I'll treat patients according to what I would normally have done anyway. Retreating with docetaxel remains an option as well um, because patients in, these, in the chartered study were not treated to the point of chemotherapy resistance. They were administered six cycles. So a majority of them are likely to continue to have chemotherapy sensitive disease. But the question of what is the optimal sequence of therapies after initial chemotherapy remains open and it's something that, uh, that many people are, are, are looking into now.